How are you doing ladies and gentlemen, my name is Inks and I'm from IGS Electronics and today we are going to be continuing on our previous video where we uh, set up our uh, temperature control in our uh, uh, S7 1500 series PLC and also use the HMI for it and today we're going to have a look at the, the actual PID controllers uh, tuning so uh, many of you probably would ask what is tuning and why do we need tuning uh, technically you can run without tuning you know, it, as soon as you do all the all, everything we did in the last video, you put things on and they will work straight away. But it will work on its default numbers, and which which in some ways are uh, could be if you're looking for just like on and off and things like that. Yeah, we probably would work and things like. That. But with tuning, what you do, you look, you teach the you teach the controller to understand what's it dealing with. So uh, how well, is it? What kind of liquids? It, well, not, not not like what kind of liquids is it? It's how fast the temperature goes up when 100% heat is put, uh, put into it, or how, how fast it goes up when it's, I don't know, 50% is put into it. And it sort of works out how uh, to uh, work with uh, what it needs to do. Uh, in our case, the heat at the water, how to get to the optimum uh, results and reach the temperature as fast as possible and, and as close as possible without overrunning it. And obviously there's so many other things in there that uh, uh, the controller still does, but it does that all, uh, all that within its algorithmic formula, I would call it. And I don't even know half of those, more than half those numbers, what that is. I don't, I, personally, I don't care. As long as he does his business and, and uh, 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 sort of teaches himself of what he's dealing with. Does it do it 100% to what you're liking? No, that's why some of the parameters we have put on our... Uh, 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 HMR so we can adjust it in case we need to so uh, so yeah and, uh, and and the one thing is for sure that uh, not always I mean not always the tuning is going to be too 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 hundred percent where you would like to be and that's why is you need to work out which parameters that you think you're going to need to adjust to put on your HMI screen so you are able to do that so yeah that's what we can do that so without further ado let's get started <music> So to do a quick recap, there's a HMI that was something that we worked on in a previous video. The only thing I've done, I added the PID backup screen in here. So uh, uh, let me know in the comments below if you want to know how I made this PID backup screen because because uh, I'll, 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 I'll be doing all sorts of different tests and things like that. So I, uh, I w often wanted to load back the PID with parameters that, that from default. So these can be edited and set up uh, separately in a system if you wish to. And uh, if, if you ever have a, a backup uh, PID gone wrong and you need to need to see the backup or load backup, you are able to do that. So I created this additional screen. So everything else is here. So we did in the last video. So here is our PLC where we have our uh, pulse going to our solid state relay. There is our uh, temperature card and which, which well analog input card that accepts the temperature. And uh, there is our uh, solid state relay. And as you can see in here, I have uh, updated my uh, from cup into the bigger bowl purely because the temperature sensor was way too close to the heater and it was messing up with the tune. So tune was just just it was just jumping temperature up and down way too weirdly. So system was not sufficient enough. So yeah, that's a quick recap. So let's get on to the laptop and start uh, get, get ourselves starting. All right, there we are. So get ourselves started. This is the RPID control we created in previous videos. So uh, there's a couple of ways to ac uh, access the commissioning is right here or click it right here. So by clicking on that one, so let's make this screen a separate and a full. So from there on, what we're going to do, we're going to go online. So we uh, connect to our PLC, so it's all there. So uh, let's lower this a little bit lower. So the things you need to do in here, so let's click a, a, a uh, start in here. So uh, PID at the moment, as you can see, is, is in a, uh, let's, let's stop it for now. So uh, it's, it's, it's sort of on, but it's not on. So because the tuning hasn't even started yet. So what, one, one thing we're going to do is uh, we are going to put heating on in here. So make sure the signal is able to go through. If you don't know how that was done, so... Uh, then uh, do check out the previous video. So there's two modes in here, which is a, a, a pre-tuning uh, pre -tuning heating and fine-tuning heating. So pre-tuning heating is, is basically uh, uh, for, for temperatures uh, range, well, I, don't, I can't remember what range, but higher ranges of a temperature. And fine-tuning when you have really tight range. So we don't have that kind of thing. So, so we're gonna stick to uh, pre-tuning heating. So um, from there on, just click start. So, uh, Come on. 
Why are you not starting? Uh, oh, it's not starting because we haven't edited that our uh, uh, set point. Forgot that one. So let's edit our set point in here, which is going to say 80 degrees. So let's go back and do the click again. Let's reset that. Uh, uh, sorry, this one in here. So, and let's start the tuning. And here we go. So what he's going to do now in a minute is calculating a standard deviation for heating. And uh, it should take, uh, put it on in a minute. As you can see, heat output at the moment stands at zero and boom, it's 100%. So what he's going to be doing now is going to be heating the water. So I'll quickly show you the camera as well. So uh, you'll be able to see the bubble, little bubbles in a minute. There you go. Heater is on. And temperature is rising and as he does that yes let's do that and as he does that he's, he's doing his maths now so uh he's doing the determinant point of uh inflection for heating i ain't got a clue what that means i don't care it, i'll let him do his business so what are we going to do we're going to uh, i'm going to pause it in here as you can see it's uh, it's it's doing this and i'm going to come in and out as it progresses because it take approximately uh, with the amount of water i have in there with small heat and time and it probably could take about 10 minutes to do it so uh let's come back once it start doing something different there we are we are coming close already to a uh determining the point of inflection and once it does that he will uh, work out of the needed parameters it's basically told himself how to heat that water to in his idea the most optimum way so uh sometimes sometimes uh, the status as you can status can say uh failed and uh you will have to redo it again so you go i was doing something and boom system has been tuned as you can see it just dropped the heat down to 34 uh, percent and uh, pretty much it's going to be hovering in that area within this uh something about 60 degrees or something like that. i'm not really sure so technically the system has been tuned let's have a look on our uh, hmi screen what he has done down there so as you can see in here is has set up the gain at 1.2 and control zone on 144 from for my liking that would be uh, i would gain 1.2 that would be a little bit too slow for me so i'm probably going to be playing a little bit more about uh getting it uh, getting it uh, get, getting this this going up uh quicker and there's again you can do your your own system uh, your own uh, actual tuning yourself because gain is sort of a sort of a how fast it can go to the point and, and, and at what speed and then it's probably going to be overrunning and but again you can play it for yourself the gain 1.2 for my liking would be a little bit too slow to get to the temperature but that's again depending on your application so once we've done that so what we're going to do in here as you can see there's all sorts of different way heating things what was going on as, as and, and it's still in it's actually still heating so what we're going to do we're going to stop it and as you can see in here it says in here let me just go on to it as i send the pid parameters from cpu to the project so technically that pid parameters are not in our project they are, are inside the plc's technology block so the plc doesn't is, is kind of have it it doesn't have it so we need to load that into our project and then load it into the plc and to show you what that means so uh, let's go uh, in here. So where is our technology block? Uh, open the DB editor. So and then uh, uh, as you can see in here, we have a start value, snapshot and monitoring value. That's what's exactly inside the PLC. As you can see, our start values are different. So they have not been loaded into the project yet. So we need to load them into the project. Otherwise, the next time we're going to load the project into PLC, it will load these start values into it. And uh, your uh, sort of a tuning will not be effectively working. So let's do that. So uh, let it, uh, was it this one? Yes. So just click that one. And here we go. Now it says PID parameters are exactly the same as project and low. Uh, and we need to uh, go back onto a uh, thing in here. So as you can see down here, all that now will be transferred into our project. But as you can see in here, it says hello, the project, the, 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 the something is different inside the PLC's program. So it asks you, you need to update that. And pretty, pretty much it's telling you in here, the PID parameters, whatever is different, uh, what's inside the PLC. Basically, uh, some, some of the parameters that is loaded in is uh, for that technology block are not the same that is in the plc so what we need to do we need to update that as well so by clicking that 
Uh, yes, uh, do, do you want to override a PID 10 block? Yes, we do. And everything is green. And that, ladies and gentlemen, our controller is more or less, let me just do that, set up. And that's how the tuning is done. So we've tuned it, we've done it. So uh, next time, uh, what we're gonna do, we're gonna restart the system, start it back up, and everything should be working perfectly well. Then after that, you can uh, uh, try to heat it yourself or whatever you're trying to do and see if it's satisfactory for you. And you're thinking like, mm, that's probably a little bit too slow. Mm, that's, that's, or too fast. Or that control zone is a little bit too high because that's a little bit, uh, that, that's too high for me. So I would probably uh, lower that one down a little bit. Again, play with those parameters and see what parameters do you need to adjust to get your, to your desired uh, result. The tuning helps you to get there to some optimum result. But again, often the tuning is not satisfactory for your liking, for your uh, application. So do, as per, you already, already have looked at it, how to put all the parameters on the HMI screen so you can adjust them yourself. And that, ladies and gentlemen, will do for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and uh, it does give you some good idea how to do it and what it does and how it works. So yeah, if you like the video, don't smash that like and do subscribe if you're new to the channel. So without further ado, crash that last one. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.